into the system. Why is it different than what you just explained? Oh, the question was how I measure S, the parameter yeah. S. The process seems the same. Here you, you eat a meal yeah. and here you inject the insulin. Exactly. It is the same except you, instead of inserting glucose, you insert insulin. So it's a different way oh, to okay. perturb the same equation. Okay. Explain? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, correct. So um, there is, a, if insulin is zero, mm -hmm. oh. if insulin is zero, there's, uh, I'm neglecting here some things. One is an insulin independent glucose removal rate that would happen basally in the brain especially as an insulin independent, it's like privileged organ and it's the first organ that gets the glucose. And, so, and also there's, ins there's um, baseline glucose production by the liver, by gluconeogenesis. So I just want to say, I'm ignoring a, a lot of important biology here in order to get the point. It's, it's, it doesn't matter for what, what I'm going to say, but I'm also ignoring glucagon, which is the opposite enzyme. When glucose goes below 5 millimolar, you get glucagon, and it makes the liver make uh, insulin. There's, uh, then there's uh, fat and amino acids. Have an effect, a lot of things have an effect that I'm ignoring. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so, so when you need let's let's analyze that. How do insulin levels go up? Right. So we need to. How does this? How does this? This is this. This is equation. Is this one? And now let's do how insulin levels go up. So insulin levels. So these beta cells. I'm going to call them X. Soon you'll understand why. X is the number of beta cells. And they secrete insulin according to some function. The more a glucose, the more insulin is secreted. So this is the cells sensing glucose and secreting more and more insulin. And then insulin is, of course, degraded. And here, this is the half-life of insulin. It's about half-life this, this half life of about 30 minutes. So insulin itself is a molecule that uh, it, it gets degraded. So we have a Q is, OK, thanks. So Q is insulin production per beta cell. This is a uh, number of beta cells. And this is the control function, function where the more glucose you have, the more insulin you make. And it's estimated to go like G squared a lot of times. So that's just a physiological measurement. So more and basically what the beta cells do is they, they, they take the glucose and they break it up just like every other cell does with glycolysis. Changes their ATP to ADP ratio. That causes a calcium outflux. It causes <coughs> vesicles of insulin to go to the membrane and release insulin. So there's like a big signal transduction inside the beta cells. Again, I'm just rolling up in F of G. Yeah. Does Q change compared to person? Like sure. So we, this is another parameter we need to worry about. Yeah, this could be like if your if your <laughs> beta cells are weak and all and and, uh, and uh, so that's also something to worry about. So that's another robustness, and in fact, it's going to be fine yeah. okay. because we'll see <laughs> it, for sure. So these parameters are you need to worry about them, right? You need to. This function that's usually less variable because it's more like. Uh, coded into the circuitry, like this kind of circuitry, input-output function that we saw that can be made robust. Okay, now what, I'm, what the point is, this, the, if you give M like this, this circuit, even if I give M, yeah, if I give M like this, this circuit <coughs> will uh, have, in, uh, will have gl uh, glucose start go up because M is increasing, then insulin, because G is increasing, starts to go up, and then Removal of glucose increases, so it goes down, and like that. Okay. So this is the solution, a solution to this equation. And it's very interesting now to ask, what is the glucose steady state? So suppose now I even um, suppose now I give a, a constant meal. Like, for instance, I make it, take it in glucose infusion. You can do that sometimes. I give a constant meal. Or better even, when I'm fasting, 
on fasting, M is just the basal production of glucose by my liver. That's what at night, right? Or in the morning, before I eat, I have some M. And now, what is the glucose steady state? So we want it to be 5 millimolar, right? So let's see, the point is going to be that it's going to depend on all these parameters, like S and Q, etc. You can't go around it with these equations. So it's going to, it's going to depend. So my point is going to depend on all these parameters. So just to solve it, right, so dg dt equals 0. So S i g equals m. So g steady state is S i steady state divided by this m, 0. It's the other way around. Thank you. Now, if you can't follow this uh, quick, as quickly as I do it, um, that's why we have all the movies and the books. Just the, the important thing is to get the spirit of it. And on the other hand, I am solving it on the blackboard for you to see, to get the physicality of doing math like that. that I think is so, so great. And so we, we have alpha i steady state has to equals q x f of g steady state. I'm going to put here um, g squared. Just I'm going to use f equals g squared. Uh, because m, m is not zero. Well, in this, no, I'm talking in real life. In real life, the body, the, the, the liver makes uh, glucose all the time, oh. like gluconeogenesis, yeah. Otherwise, we would be in trouble when we're in sleeping. Yeah, so I think the glucose, the way the, the, the body works is that the liver is an amazing organ, multitasking organ, maybe we'll talk about that later. It can take, it can take uh, amino acids, like the muscles, if the muscles break down a little bit, uh, it takes amino acids, and converts them into glucose all the time. So when we're starving for a long time, that's our, our muscles and our fat also. Fat secretes uh, all these triglycerides that we have in our blood tests that are too high <laughs> or too low, it depends. I don't know how old you are, but eventually. And then that can be converted also into glucose, if I'm not mistaken. So the liver can do all that. And good, let's take a nice deep sigh of relief. <sighs> You know, so, uh, so, uh, so G steady state squared equals alpha I steady state divided by Q X alpha, yeah? So let's plug in I steady, uh, I steady, st uh, okay, then what, what am I, I'm not, now I got lost in all this stuff. I want to calculate, yeah, let's do it like this. I steady state, right, is, um, is uh, M0 divided by SG steady state. Let's, let's plug that in. Alpha M0 divided by SG steady state QX. And we move G steady state over here. So you get a power 3. And the answer is that G steady state equals something to the power 1 third. That something is something like alpha M0 divided by SQX. What does this mean? It means that if I change S by a factor of 10, like insulin resistance, G steady state changes by 0.1 to the power of one third, which is 2, well, uh, 1 half. So if I reduce this by a factor of 10, I go from 5 millimolar to 10 millimolar. But that's not what's observed. So you can, you can be a person with insulin resistance and have also 5 millimolar. See what I mean? So this model, yeah, G-steady state, is not, not robust to changes in S. So if you have insulin resistance, that's to say you suddenly have S goes down by a factor of 10, G-steady state will go up by a factor of 2. <coughs> so you'll, you have a situation like this, basically. And also, uh, the response time. The response time to a meal will rise as S goes low. So everything in this circuit, it is very, very normal. If you change a parameter in an equation, like a removal rate, it'll change the steady state and the dynamics. If you make this removal rate slower, glucose will go away slower. 
And that's in contradiction to the observation that people with different values of S have basically the same dynamics. So we need to understand this, uh, this uh, compensation. That's why I say it's, it's a, it's a, it's a non-trivial problem to deal with. But also, of course, Q, this, pro this question Q, this production per cell also enters here. And the number of beta cells enters here. And uh, everything. So everything <laughs> changed. Can you show me the difference between the two graphs? You know? The difference? Um, Are they identical? They're not identical. They, uh, they're both uh, kind of glucose goes up. And then because of this term, insulin goes up. And insulin eventually is removed. But it's not so important right now. OK, so we need to understand how a dynamical system can have exactly the same steady state and dynamics if we change a parameter like S. And, and how does it work in our body that uh, you can eventually cancel out uh, changes in S on a long time scale? Here. So uh, the answer is that there is an additional feedback loop that's um Can you keep that? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, th I think uh, this is a good time here, just like we did uh, previously, to ask you to, to, just to see that you, you get these equations and what's going on here, to turn to the person next to you, spend a couple of minutes, explaining to each other what I just said, these equations, the dynamics, and the idea of why they're not robust to S, okay? Just, and then I guarantee it'll be good for you to understand. Then we'll see if any more questions arise. Could be next to you, behind you. Could be someone behind you or next to you. Probably because there's additional new neural neuronal inputs to the beta cells. Yeah, it's anti anticipation. It's, uh, it's one of the like hundred things that you can. Uh, All right, uh, I just want to, uh, if I can get your attention back again. Um, I want, you know, the, the, there was a question about anticipation. So when you know, you know you're going to eat, the comment was your body already se secretes insulin before glucose comes in, right? So there could be neuronal inputs to the beta cells that are not taken into account here. Maybe they change Q, for example. And, uh, and many other details I'm not taking into account here, just to get the principle. Yeah, so any questions? Yeah, all those details you're not taking into account. Yeah, so you say maybe those details um, lock G steady state. Yeah. yeah, so could be, yeah. What happens if, there, if, if the 
body gets more and more insulin and the cells take up more and more and more glucose, at some point they will explode, right? Yeah, so what happens to the balance if the cells take up too much insulin and like in the muscles and stuff like that, they c th there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, there's so much glucose yeah. in the cells, right? So uh, the body, a lot of times, uh, like muscles, etc., liver, makes, puts gl glucose into these long polymers called glycogen and stores it. So they have a, we have a, a lot of glycogen actually in our body. Is, is that's what we can use to make new glucose also. I forgot to say that. Um, and I suppose there's always a limit, some breakdown. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> always. Okay, so what is this extra feedback loop? The extra feedback loop has to do with, the observation is that there is a, um, the body compensates over weeks for, let's say, insulin resistance by increasing the number of beta cells. So if you uh, look at obese people, they have many, many more beta cells. So the way that works is that X, X changes. X changes, so there's more beta cells, makes more insulin to exactly cancel out the change in the insulin effectivity. And there's a really intriguing finding in medicine called the hyperbolic law, where you take people and you measure their insulin sensitivity and their insulin steady state. So you look at their blood, what's their steady state of insulin, and then you inject some insulin and see how effective it is in removing glucose. And different people lie on a hyperbola where SI times I steady state equals constant. These are healthy people. Obese people are in this region. Lean people in this region, typically. Genetics affects where you are. And diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is here, below the, the hyperbola. So this is the, and we want to explain that observation too. Why, why, how, do, how a body does this, how it can change insulin secretion to exactly balance this change in the parameter. Yeah. And the, the, so we need to see how the body can compensate by increasing X. So we need equations for X, the, the rate of change of cells. And the rate of change of cells is a fascinating topic because it adds, it adds a really interesting biology that, that's new for us in this course. And because cells, what do cells do? What can cells do? Cells just like cells can divide into two. So that's the pr what's called proliferation. So that happens at a rate P. And cells can also commit apoptosis or die. Cells in our body actually on purpose kill themselves when they're damaged, etc. So the cells have proliferation and death rate. Now that sounds similar to production and removal of proteins that we talked about so far, right? So far we talked about production and removal of proteins. So I just want to spell out here an important difference between protein circuits and cell circuits. So uh, where should I write this? Uh, over here. So the protein circuits we worked at, uh, at so far had production and decay, maybe you remember this. This is time, you start somewhere and protein X goes always to its steady state beta over alpha. If I start high, if I start low, it's just inherently stable. There's no problem. You always go to your steady state because production balances removal. But in cells, so this is a protein in a cell, right? Cells proliferate and die. And the important thing is that their proliferation rate, cells always come from cells. So the proliferation rate always depends on how many cells there are. Unlike proteins, which are made, they're not autocatalytic in per se. And that means 
you can take x out of the parentheses. You have x times something. You have x times mu. Now, what's the problem? The problem is that, so this is proteins. They're stable. Cells, if this mu is bigger than zero, you get explosion. If this mu is smaller than zero, that is to say, if there's more proliferation than death, you go to infinity. Of course, it's always limited by something, but it's, you don't want it. That's like in cancer that happens, right? You have unchecked proliferation of cells. If you have more death than proliferation, you get neuro de like degenerative disease. Yeah, cells go to zero, basically. In order to keep uh, organ size, to keep organ size constant, just this constant number of cells, you need a miracle, basically. You need something to balance proliferation and death. Yeah, so this is a big problem for cells. So I say, say cells live on a knife's edge just because of their equations. Okay, so just this problem of organ size control is itself a big mystery, you can say, in biology. And there's different uh, solutions right now known, but it's still not exactly clear. So I'm going to write here x times uh, proliferation minus death, right? And here is the feedback loop that's very well known, uh, but hasn't been still very recently appreciated. It's such an amazing piece of uh, biological feedback. Um, is that uh, the trick is that this tissue, beta cells, its function is to control glucose, and glucose affects the proliferation and death rates. So glucose, so here I'm called here glucose, averaged over weeks. And here I'm going to call, pull out the, the death rate. And check this out, experimental fact. At low glucose, the cells die. And at high glucose, they stop dying. And it's a steep curve at 5 millimolar. Right, so that's what glucose does to proliferation. And this is, is to death. This is proliferation. I don't want to use too many color. Proliferation rate. So you see that when death equals proliferation, death equals proliferation, at this point, you get a set point. That's why 5 millimolar is built into that circuit. So we're going to write here. mu of g, where mu of g is 0, 5 millimolar, equals 0. So mu is proliferation minus death. We plot here mu of g, and it's negative at low numbers and positive at high numbers and at 5 millimolar. It's a stable situation. So if you have too much glucose, check out what happens. More proliferation than death. More proliferation means more beta cells. More beta cells means more insulin. More insulin means there's less glucose. So you go back, you flow back. Too little glucose, more death. Better cells die, they shrink, 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 shrink. The, the, therefore, less insulin, therefore, more glucose, and therefore, you flow back, and it's a stable fixed point at 5 millimolar. So it's almost like writing, almost like writing. And <coughs> 5 millimolar <laughs> minus G. So the only way this equation can reach steady state <coughs> is only if G equals G0 equals 5 millimolar. And here is again, I say G average over weeks. When, so when we add this equation here, it affects everything here, but guarantees that if I change the parameter S, things are going to respond right away. But then over weeks, the only way the beta cells will expand. So suppose I uh, change S, beta cells will expand and stop when glucose reaches 5 millimolar. And so we're going to tune everything, insulin. And when you change Q, exactly the same thing. Beta cells will start expanding or shrinking until, and when do they stop? When 5 millimolar. So you get built in over weeks your basal 
glucose is going to be locked in. It's like the integral feedback property, basically, that we talked about before. And the, the, the beta cell mass is like a buffer that buffers uh, fluctuations in these parameters. Yeah. Exactly. And it will stay the same, right? It's not, it can go back if I stay within the 5 millimolar uh, diet. It's going to stay the same until you change these uh, parameters, like get insulin resistance or something like that. So uh, it's like, it's a way to compensate. And, and I just want to say that um, so this gives you this gives you, um, but, uh, but there's something even more amazing that happens here. It's not enough that the steady state is five millimolar. We wanted the entire, the entire dynamics to be the same. So <laughs> the amazing thing about these equations is that they have a, a structure where if I change these parameters, this parameter, or this parameter, the entire dynamics um, after the reach system reaches steady state is just invariant to these parameters. So this, this, these equations have like a symmetry that makes them invariant to changing to those parameters. Um, and I'm, I just want to draw out the dynamics now. So far we talked about dynamics at the fast time scale, I want to plot out the dynamics because we added here another time scale. This is time scale of weeks. So here's what happens. If insulin sensitivity drops